Hi, this is Ed Bear, and today's video is going to be on my preparedness bag. Meet Bob. Bob stands for bug out bag. Now you may have heard the terms bug out bag or 72 hour bag or get home bag or emergency bag or get out of dodge bag or whatever. But this is my bag. Now there are some people who will tell you that a get home bag and a bug out bag are not the same thing. That the supplies and tools that you need to bug out are different than what you need to get home. But you know what? I got four people in my family. I'm not going to be making a different kind of bag for each person in the family. Next thing you know, I'm doing 12 bags. This isn't my life and I don't have the money to do that. So I've got one bag that's going to serve for all of those things. This is also my camping and backpack bag. I need to be using this equipment and get used to it. The time to learn how to use these tools is not during an emergency. Now there's nothing very special about this bag. In fact, it's a knockoff. What I like about it, it's got molly and uh, it's got a lot of pouches. Now, some people will tell you that you buy the bag to fit the equipment. You don't buy the bag and then fit the equipment in there. I kind of disagree with that. Uh, I know what each person is capable of and so I need to get a pack that they can carry. I can't just get a pack that has everything that will go in there and then expect someone to carry it because everyone has limitations. So where do you keep your bag? Well I'll tell you where I keep mine. I keep mine in my car, preferably hidden. I don't want people looking in and wanting to steal it. My car is almost always with me. Whether I'm at home, the car is here. If I go to work or transit, I'm in the car. I visit place, I go in the car. The only time I really don't have my car with me is if we take a different car or I fly out of town. Okay, attached to my bag, I keep a paracord bracelet, which I put on, and I have a Swiss Army uh, watch with a Sun 2 uh, compass which I put on because I normally don't wear a watch anymore. Uh, I also keep a hat with a flashlight that's clipped to the bin, the bill. And uh, I wear all of those things. So I'm going to weigh this without those things on. Okay, so we're at 29.3 pounds, give or take a couple pounds because I'm always adding or taking something out. So these are some things that are attached to the outside of my pack. First is a whistle for emergency. And then I have a Leatherman. In this case, it's a Leatherman Super Tool. Uh, it has the bits and the ratchet thing. The most important thing on the Leatherman, besides the knife and the pliers, are a saw. So whichever one I pick, it's always going to have a saw. I'm probably going to switch this one out with something a little lighter. But always get yourself a quality multi-tool, such as this or a good Gerber um, or SOG or one of those. This is my hydration system, and it's all based around a 32-ounce Nalgene bottle of water. I keep it full of water. I drink this water. Anytime I go someplace, I replace this water. It doesn't go to waste. Um, if I pour it out, it goes into my rain catchment system, which I then use for the garden. But I believe in the philosophy of Confucius. A bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. I see so many people that carry things like a, a metal bottle where they can get water and then they can boil it. But that affects the route that you must take to either evacuate or get back home. It means you have to go to where the water is. It means that you've then got to start a fire or use some purification method or something. So I prefer to be able to focus on where I'm getting to. So this is my Nalgene bottle of uh, 32 ounces of water, followed by my Sawyer Mini kit. This is the uh, syringe for the back flushing. Uh, actually, they call it a plunger. This is a water bag for collecting dirty water that can then be uh, cleaned. And this is the filter itself along with a straw. Over here, we have one of those, uh, what do they call this? A Whirl, uh, Whirl Pack stand-up bag. Uh, you can put water in this and actually stand it and it'll stand straight up and not spill the water. Over here, I've got a bottle of iodine and I've written down the instructions. It's in a plastic bag inside of a pill box. 
And then finally over here, I have a clear plastic bag that I can use on trees in order to gather water through a process called transpiration. Okay, this is my first aid kit. It is strapped to the side of my bug out bag. And I've chosen not to have certain things in here. You know, you can only carry so much. And um, each bag is different to the person, to the area where you live in, the time of the year, etc. And um, so these are the choices I've made. In here, I've got a cold press. I've got uh, earplugs for protection against excessive noise. I've got a couple rolls of gauze. I've got an N95 dust mask. I've got a package of band-aids of different types. I've got a little mirror here that I picked up at the dollar store. Now, I have ordered a better mirror uh, for survival and whatnot that has a proper sighting uh, hole and everything else, but it hasn't arrived yet. But this will do in a pinch. I've got a uh, elastic support bandage uh, for, for sprains and things. I've got some eye drops. I've got a Fresnel lens, and this is good for being able to look at things that are small, like a splinter, especially when you get older, it becomes hard to see. Uh, it can be used for reading. I know everybody says that it can be used to make uh, start a fire. I've burned holes in leaves. I need to actually take the time to practice. This is what we talk about, getting familiar with your gear and being able to use it, learn how to use it before there's a disaster. So that's one of the things that's on my list. I've got a number of tubes of ointments and creams. Um, let's see, this one is for itching and rashes. Uh, this one's for burns. Uh, this is a aura gel type of thing for your mouth. Um, hemorrhoids. Um, we've got triple antibiotic ointment. I've got something for your feet and this is SPF uh, sunblock. Uh, what's the SPF rating on this? Let's see. 30, so that's pretty good. In here, I have a number of pills that includes Aleve, Pepsid Complete, Coracetin, uh, Ibuprofen, Blistex, Cough Drops, Laxatives, Aspirins, Anti-Diarrhea, Allergy Pills, and Gas Tablets. Let me tell you, when you're out in the field, uh, your stomach can really have problems, especially if you're not used to it. So when you're eating and drinking things that you're not used to, your stomach may not appreciate it. Down here at the bottom is a tick remover, and I'm not going to show it to you, but I also have my prescription medicines. And sure enough, just after I recorded that bit, my signal mirror came in. This is my writing kit. It contains some um, paper from my Write in the Rain pad. Uh, keep in mind, just because the paper is Write in the Rain doesn't mean your ink is. So I've got two pencils, including a contractor pencil, and a uh, Sharpie. Okay, on the other side of my bag is my cook kit. And it mainly comprises of the Stanley cook kit, which has two cups and a lid. And then I've chosen to add a nesting cup to it. And then a little stove that I made out of corrugated cardboard and uh, melted candle wax to act as a stove. I also have the sterno. Now, you know, I live what MapQuest says is 17 hours from my work. And depending on when the emergency could occur, I may or may not be able to get back all at once. So I may say, hey, you know what? This is weight I don't need. There are other things that I have in my car, additional water, food, and other supplies that I may or may not take with me. Remember, this bag only functions on its own when I have to leave my car. Okay, uh, in the front pocket of my uh, bug out bag, it's not very deep, but it's large. And so I keep a few things in there. In here, I keep a sheath of papers and a plastic uh, uh, envelope and uh, it contains uh, printouts of MapQuest and Google Maps on different ways to get home uh, or other places I may need to go, whether it's by road or by foot. In this plastic bag, I keep a couple of maps for the local area as well as the entire state of California where I live. I've got a compass. I've got a folding stove, which I can use both with my little... Uh, 
stove that I built uh, made of wax and uh, cardboard uh, or I can use the sterno and last I have a Mora knife. Now one word about knives, never put your knife in the bag dull. Always make sure it's sharp. The time to be sharpening knives and other cutting tools is not during a disaster. Okay, so this is the large knife that I've decided to carry with this preparedness bag. It is a Condor knife. Uh, it was designed by Matt Graham of Dual Survival. He was uh, my favorite on the show. I really admired what he did. As you can see, this is a, a pretty big knife. Um, I carry that instead of a machete or even a hatchet. Um, it's heavy. Uh, I could decide not to bring it with me. After all, I still have a Mora knife and I have a Leatherman. This is the contents of my bag. I like to use a system of modular kits so that I can easily find things. And also when the event arises, I can decide what I want to keep and what I want to take with me very quickly. So I'm going to start with the things that are not really in parts of kits. Okay, um, let's start with this. This is a Wobi. Uh, it is also called a, um, a liner for a rain poncho. And it's not to wear with the poncho, but it basically allows you to take a poncho and make it into a sleep system. So along with that, I have the uh, military uh, rain poncho as well. Next, I have an emergency blanket. As you can see, it is super heavy duty. It's also a tarp, so this can help keep you warm. I would say you could build a shelter with it, except that I am bringing a very small, simple tent. Next is a shemog. I think a lot of people know what this is. Uh, this uh, unfolds to be pretty big. You can use it to um, cover yourself to help keep yourself a little bit warmer. You can use it to help filter water when you're collecting it into a canteen or a bottle. Um, I've even seen, uh, well, Cody Lundin was a master of using this as a backpack. So Shemog has a lot of different uses. I have an MRE in here. I've written the year I purchased it. I figure after five years, well, actually before that, I figure once or twice a year I should eat one of these. Obviously it's uh, due. I'm, I'm due to eat this one. Uh, just to keep in practice of knowing what it is that you're taking with you, what you like, what you don't like. But I like these military MREs. They're rugged. Uh, they last a long time. They give you a lot of calories. And there's no cooking or preparation. The food is just ready to eat. Even if you don't heat it up, it's okay to eat. Uh, now, they do come with a heating element that needs a little bit of water. But if water is a, a scarcity, uh, then you don't need to use it to eat it. You can eat all this. And that's another thing. A lot of people like these freeze-dried um, meals. But again, it means water. It means you're going to have to go and find water or you're going to have to use some of the water you carry. And yes, I do carry another canteen full of water because water is precious. And if I've got a hike, um, a 17-hour hike, I might need a lot of water. I don't want to be using it on food and then have to go collect more water. In addition, if things get really bad, I've got two Millennial Bars. They're 400 calories each. One's cherry and one's coconut. Don't kid yourself, those flavors barely come out at all. If you sniff them, you can sort of get the, the, the scent of what they are. But, you know, they'll keep you alive. They'll, they're, they're good for that. Now, this is my clothes kit, and I like to put these little tags on them that say what they are in case I forget or someone else is accessing the bag, and they don't know how I packed it. Um, this one is in a Ziploc bag because I need to keep my clothes warm. There's not a pair of pants in here, but there's a shirt, underwear, socks, and a bandana. I call this my 70s repair kit. I'm a child of the 70s, and we used a lot of this stuff to fix things uh, during that time. I'm going to start with my eyeglass repair kit. I wear prescription lenses. They happen to be the kind that get dark when you are out in the sun. Uh, but I need them. They're very important to me. Uh, and a lot of times I actually care... Uh, carry a spare set of glasses, but I think a, a glass repair kit is essential for anyone who wears glasses. 
Next, I have a sewing kit. It's pre-threaded, so I don't have to figure out how to get that string through that little tiny hole in the needle. Um, I picked this up when I stayed at a hotel. Uh, there's also a safety pin. I, I'm actually going to be getting a little set of safety pins that are actually diaper pins because the safety uh, requirements for diaper pins are much uh, greater than a safety pin, so I figure the quality is much better. Um, someone told me that on YouTube, and I forget who because I'd like to give them credit for that. Over here, I have a very small carabiner and just a couple of key rings. You just never know when they're going to come and uh, be handy. Um, I've got some black Gorilla duct tape. And I've got some white duct tape. Now, the reason I have white duct tape is because I can use it to label things. I have a Sharpie in another one of my kits. And together, I can use those to label things or leave instructions. Black on black doesn't do you a lot of good, but black on white sure does. By the way, in the rain, the Sharpies do pretty well. In another one of my videos, I did a test on um, a right in the rain pad. I ran it through the, the, uh, the washing machine. And uh, my space pen got all erased, but the stuff I wrote with the Sharpie didn't. So just a little plug there for a Sharpie. We've got some um, cable ties. We've got the next generation of the P38 or the John Wayne can opener. It's not only a can opener, it's got a little more leverage. You could use it as a spoon and a bottle opener. We've got some Velcro tape to attach things. I've got some great crazy glue, which has a lot of different uses, including being able to close wounds. And then here we have the famous bungee cords. I've got a roll of, um, what, what do you call this, dental floss. And um, the people in Alaska swear by this stuff. It can be used for all sorts of things. It's cordage, basically. I've got a couple nails, and that's pretty much it for this kit. Here I have a monocular, um, a cleaning rag, and a holster. Uh, this takes up less space than a pair of binoculars, obviously, but I don't think people always appreciate just how important these things can be. Now, where I go from work to home, I know that terrain very well, but if you find yourself in another area, uh, being able to scout out the terrain could be very important, especially if you're in the desert and you're looking for signs of water. Um, the ability to scan the horizon with a monocular is much better than without. Okay, so this is my warmth kit, and here we are focusing on the head, the hands, and the feet. So um, right over here, these gloves I got, they have special tips that allow you to use your cell phone or tablet, and it'll still feel the uh, touch with your think finger or thumb. So I have these gloves, they're not the warmest, although I live in California, okay? And then I got these uh, Hot Hands hand warmers. I have two packs, there's two in each one. I actually don't use them on my hands. Uh, I will use those, slip them in my socks when I go to sleep at night, and they really help keep me warm. And the last is this uh, Balakava. This is also a neck warm. It slides over your head, but you can uh, over your head and neck, so that you can keep uh, your head warm. This is my sundries kit, and um, yeah, it's one of those things could be optional. Certainly, a lot of things in here could be optional, but staying clean in the field is very important. It's so easy to get sick in the field, especially with your hands and your face. Um, of course, if you're trying to get help from somebody, being more presentable doesn't hurt your cause. So we've got in here some deodorant, a bar of soap, hand sanitizer, and you know something like hand sanitizer has multiple uses. You can use this as a fire starter and a fire extender. Put that with some cotton balls and uh, that'll help you get a fire going in no time. Uh, same with the antibacteria wet wipes. Um, you can use that as a fire starter, but this is how I take a bath in the field. Uh, it takes just so much less water to get clean using these than it does uh, water out of a canteen or something like that. We've got some uh, skin lotion, uh, more earplugs. I've got a nail file, tweezers, which of course can be used for first aid purposes. Nail cutters, which could also be used to cut line and other things. Little pair of scissors. 
I've got two toothbrushes because there's a very good chance my wife will be with me. And this just gives us, it's not as gross sharing a toothbrush. I've got a tube of toothpaste. I've got chapstick. Chapstick is another one of those things that can be used for other purposes. It can be used as a fire uh, extender and starter. In fact, you can take that and uh, a Q-tip and make uh, cut it in half and stick it in there and rub the uh, chapstick into the uh, um, Q-tip and make yourself a little candle. Um, a couple other things, there's mouthwash and shampoo here. Keep in mind, shampoo could be used to wash your entire body, not just your hair. And there's a comb here. Now, a comb is not just to comb your hair. If you were to fall or have an accident and get a bunch of stickers in from cactus, uh, that's one way to get them out. Um, and I got a bandana here for uh, protecting your neck or head from uh, sun and... Uh, Wiping the sweat off your brow and uh, it could also be used as a pre-filter for water and a number of other things. So here it is. This is my fire kit. This is what I choose to bring with me. I start off with a magnesium bar, a ferro rod, and a striker. And I keep that along with two lighters in a waterproof case. Now these lighters, I've removed the childproof um, child resistant uh, band that goes over here and I don't use Bic lighters. I know a lot of people like to use Bic lighters but I don't because I like to be able to see how much fuel is left in my lighter. Over here we have some storm proof matches, tea candles. Candles are great for getting a fire going. You can just light the candle, shove it under there, helps dry things out if your tinder is wet and whatnot. I love tea candles. And then I have cotton balls, and I always hear people say cotton balls soaked in Vaseline. What's soaking? If I open a thing of Vaseline and I put a cotton ball in there, it's not going to get into the cotton ball. It's just going to sit there. It doesn't get soaked in, um, or petroleum jelly, if you will. So I've worked the petroleum jelly into the cotton balls. And then this is a uh, Crocs uh, lighter. I found this at the dollar store. I like that it's got a little bit of a pipe here so that you can get it in there when you're trying to light the fire. You don't have to uh, sit and get your hand in there and mess with the, the tinder and the kindling and whatnot. So that's my fire kit. So this is my clean kit. And again, the idea is to save water but really maintain cleanliness. So I've got a package of wet wipes. These are antibacterial. I've got four of those little coins that you put some water on them and they explode into a full-size hand towel. And I've got some hand sanitizer, which I could attach directly to the outside of my bag. Now, you may have noticed that almost everything I have is in these different little pouches. I've collected these for free over the years. You don't have to use them. Plastic bags work just as well, plus you can see what's inside of them and they can be reused to hold water, uh, collect water, or something like that. But this is my electronics kit. Um, I work in the technology industry, uh, but I don't have a lot of faith in electronics and whatnot during a disaster. I figure that's one of the first things to go down. Uh, one of the things I would do during a disaster is take my phone and change the settings so it used as little electricity as possible so I get the longest life out of it. But I do carry a spare external battery. I've got one of these um, multi-connector uh, type of uh, cables so I can connect just about anything. I've got a USB drive. I've got a microfiber cloth to clean my screen on my, my phone, my tablet, computer, whatever. And I've got a pair of earbuds. So this is my light kit. Uh, vision is a very important skill. Uh, especially with the number of hours it'll take me to get home. There's a good chance I'm going to be dealing with something at night. Uh, humans don't see that well at night. We see color differences really well, but we don't do well without uh, light. So I've got one of those Cray uh, flashlights. They're okay. They're inexpensive. Um, they're LED, so they last a long time. I've got one of these little LED flashlights that I got from the uh, dollar store. And it's not only a flashlight, but it has a laser pointer, so I could use that for signaling. I've got three chem lights or glow sticks. And the great thing about them is that they don't need batteries or anything. 
Um, don't keep them in there forever. Uh, cycle them out every once a year or two years. Uh, use them for other things and buy new ones because there's a little glass vial in there and uh, when it breaks or wears out and the uh, chemicals all mix, they'll produce light. You won't necessarily know it. And when you go to use them, if it doesn't make that snap noise, it's not gonna give you light. Finally, I have a little solar flashlight on here. And this is really helpful for seeing inside the pack. These things are great. I've been using them for years. I don't need to charge them or replace batteries or anything because they're solar powered and it just always seems to have enough uh, juice in there. So I really like them. I believe in multiple uh, sources of light rather than a real expensive um, flashlight or something like that. This is my bug kit. Um, there's some bug repellent here. There's a head net and uh, you know, we don't have a real problem with bugs around here unless you're down by the reservoir or something like that during summer. Uh, but my wife is really susceptible to bug bites. For whatever reason, they're attracted to her and my daughter, but not to me and my other daughter. So this isn't so much for me as it really is for my wife. Uh, keep in mind that this net can be used for other things. You could use it to catch small fish and things like that. I mean, a meal of minnows is better than a meal of nothing. Okay, this is my fishing kit. There's a couple of those yo-yo spinners where they'll actually go ahead and land the fish for you automatically if you're not there. There's a stringer. There's uh, four bobbers. There's some hooks in here that you can't see with leaders. Number of sinkers and different types of hooks in here. And you can use this also to catch animals. You put some bait on the hooks and whatnot and a bird or something eats it up and swallows it, uh, they won't be able to get away. Um, I don't normally think I'd be using this in a 72 hour situation, so this is probably one of those things that I leave home. But you know, on one of my camping trips, I'll take this and, and uh, learn to fish with it. I wanted to show you this before I enroll it. It's a backpack. So this is a drawstring uh, backpack. I certainly have ones that would roll up a lot tighter than this, but this cord is actually fairly substantial. I could repair it with paracord if something happened. It's pretty hefty, pretty thick. It's good stuff. It's got a pocket up in front that's pretty sizable as well. And the reason I carry it is because two things. One is it gives me another pat, uh, pouch that I can attach to my backpack. So if I'm collecting tinder or, or something like that along the way, I could use it for that or anything else that I find that might be usable for me. Um, the other thing is I may have another person with me. Uh, oftentimes when I'm in the car, my wife is with me or someone else. It could be I might be uh, helping an employee to get home. Well, if there's two of us, I can lighten the load and put some of the things in this bag, certainly not as much as I could carry, but uh, still be very helpful. Plus, I keep other supplies in the car, more bottles of water, um, food, uh, additional kits, uh, like um, that uh, fishing kit I showed you earlier is one of the options that I normally don't bring with me, I, but I have it in the car. So I want to talk about a concept I truly believe in, and that is pack your trash. This is the contents of a typical MRE. You can see there are plastic bags that could be used for other things. For example, holding water. Uh, this one could. There's a number of bags in here. There's cardboard that could be used to um, help get a fire going. This could be used as kindling. Um, there's things that you may not even think of that could be used. For example, you've got the wrap of a, a, a spoon. Okay, so let me show you an example of a use of something as simple as a wrapper that you may not have thought of. A lot of people have these little containers. You get them uh, from shampoo and conditioner and body lotion when you go to a hotel. And they don't leak, but at least not until you open them. And then they're prone to leaking. But what you can do is you can take a piece of plastic or cellophane or whatever, and you can put it over the top. And now this won't leak. You might notice that there's nothing about firearms in this video. I think firearms are very personal. 
Um, and I happen to live in California, which is not a very firearm friendly state. But the thing I would encourage you is to always think about safety when it comes to firearms. If you enjoyed this video, please click on the like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. This was probably the most ambitious video I've done. I have a lot of people to thank in the prepper community, the sensible prepper, the urban prepper, um, the Canadian prepper. That's where I got the idea for those uh, towel tablets. Thank you very much. Uh, a lot of others and a really big monkey one. <laughs> what a name. Uh, but I got to tell you that for me it even started before YouTube. My interest started in Boy Scouts. I became an Eagle Scout and Eagle Scout means you've got great parents. Uh, people like Tom O'Neill, uh, Mr. Creasy, Mr. Miller, Mr. Fisher, Mr. Brower and of course many others but my parents Jim and Laura. Thank you.